You know let's got them hits, right? I'm not sure when I pull I know the hits you pull It's just really dread No, sir Bet on myself and I proved it. I know the industry ruthless. I'm really a threat for nuisance. The Chevy is dropping its ruthless. Think I'm the one and I proved it. I know the industry foolish. Think we're seeing the movies. It really ain't dropping out the coolness. Look at me struggle, I'm right on the bubble. I'm making it pop or being a fly. I'm in the huddle, created a hustle. When I'm at the bottom, you see me a lot. I know the energy scheming a lot. Then it's flat and I'm seeing the plot. It feel like summer again when I drop. Call up the label, say, give me a lot. My life is moving like Steven Seagal. Regular scheme that I leave it to y'all. I got to hide when we in the mall. The bigger you are, the harder you fall. And signing no paper, and find the one that created it. Bigger the volume you mean. I be the type to figure it out and figure a route to eat with the team. Bet on myself and I proved it. I know the industry ruthless. I'm really a threat for nuisance. The Chevy is dropping its ruthless. Think I'm the one and I proved it. I know the industry foolish. Think we're seeing the move. It really ain't like that cool. Look at my hustle. I'm right on the bubble. I'm making it big and staying at home. Pay me an equity, please. The money you offer don't never do shit when it's gone. I just stand stuff at the salon. Walk in the booth like honey, I'm home. I never duck. They think I'm a clone. Just shot the video, crash the drone. My life a movie like Jaden and Will. And this shit directed by Jordan Peele. I said I'm the boy, the boy for real. The boy gon' run this scheme to a mill. Big ain't signing no paper if I ain't the one that created it. Boy for real. I be the type to figure it out. Figure a route to eat with my team. Bet on myself and I proved it. I know the industry ruthless. I'm really a threat for nuisance. The Chevy is dropping its ruthless. Think I'm the one and I proved it. I know the industry foolish. Think we're seeing the move. It really ain't dropping out the cooler. Here we are, Tuesday night, Studio 67. It is uh, Kins, no clop. If you saw his video, he's rubbing it in. That is on the beaches of Cayo Coco. It's a Cayo Coco. Anyhow, uh, we hope he steps on a sea urchin uh, for rubbing it in that he's down there <laughs> drinking 
uh, Cuban rum there. He was doing the, uh, the, uh, the, the rum punch earlier. I, I told him those uh, videos aren't uh, drunk enough for us up here. If you're going to post videos in, in, in Cuba, you, you, need to, you need to add the drunken stupor ones in there. But, uh, you know, clomps away, so our co-host uh, quest begins. And it continues with Mitch Wilson. You can remember Mitch. Mitch was on episode zero and episode one. He, he's been back with us uh, when uh, when we started this old trade. Kansas yeah, it's, this back. is welcome back, how buddy. How far are you came yeah, like, from, this from our parents' basement <laughs> to uh, to a studio sixty seven? What what are you thinking? I'm I'm thinking is, this place is nothing is short of incredible. Cool? Yeah, you've got the color schemes down to a T, and. It feels professional. It, it is professional. Now, now, how many curse words do you think? Uh, you, you see our curtains here. How many curse words do you think Klomp and I, I did while we were uh, putting up these do uh, it yourself see, curtains? Just eyeballing the level on it. I mean, sorry. No, I wouldn't. I promise, Jamie. I He's wouldn't. He's in comment. construction now. And the funny <laughs> story is, Mitch and I uh, were both canned from our radio jobs the same week, November twentieth. Yeah, with the twenty twenty email. We got the email. Hey, everybody, uh, tune in. We all opened up a, that email. No subject that, line. Yeah. Important meeting tomorrow uh, at 10 a.m. Is that ever good? <laughs> everybody reading this or everybody a part of this Zoom call, your job is now act. So that's where Mitch and I fall into place. You've uh, worked, uh, you're back in, uh, what, construction now here in the city? I am, I Making am. Making way more money than radio? Uh, but I love what I do. So yeah. that's what matters. That's, maybe uh, maybe that's... it's in there at the end of the row. But in the meantime, I get to hammer some two by fours together and well, Enjoy doing it. Well, it's good, uh, good to see that you yeah. haven't left uh, the city since uh, your demise back in 2020. And again, uh, great to have you on as a co-host. Well, it's, it, okay, Warming so the camera's messing me tonight. up here because like yeah. the radio, you just like look into a mic. You can look, put your eyes down at the floor, wherever you want. I have to now deal with the camera. I'm like turning to You're talk turning to, to me. You. So I, there'll be some awkward minutes. body language and of course, here tonight. Camera. But yeah, we're here to uh, chat. Uh, today is uh, obviously February the 28th. It's Rare Disease Day, and you can see the banner uh, on our main screen here. I support Rare Disease Day. And Pierre Jolie is, you know, here to uh, talk about uh, one of the rare diseases that she, uh, that he's currently battling, which is called Gaucher disease. Pierre, first of all, welcome to uh, Kins and Klopp. A lot of people know you from, you know, you're a technician with Core Business Solutions here in the city. You're also, uh, you know, uh, one of the, the tech wizards, uh, the camera gurus at the Timmins Rock. Jack of and, all trades and the master of all of them, Pierre. Yeah, and I just saw Teresa, a friend of mine that I know from uh, in the United States with Goshi Disease, said hi. Um, hi, Teresa. And people also know me with Science Tenants. Um, and, of course, a lot of other people in the rare disease community know me worldwide and uh i can't wait to see other names pop up on the well you said uh, a lot of people will be tuning in uh, worldwide uh, for uh, tonight's show so we uh, we welcome all new viewers and of course our loyal viewers who tune in every single night and again uh, when it comes to uh gaucher disease now this is a buildup of uh certain fatty uh, substances in certain organs particularly the spleen and liver but before, uh, you know, you, you got a diagnosis of that, uh, you know, this is why we have Pierre Jolie and my Gaucher expedition, which someone's going to win this book tonight. No, someone's going to win By this way. copy. That's yours. Okay, so this is my copy. You're going to win Pierre's copy, and it's going to be uh, professionally autographed from Pierre Jolie tonight in the studio. And all you have to do is put in the hashtag Gaucher. And again, capital G-A-U-C-H-E-R. Put it into the comment field, and we'll uh, an, uh, announce the winner a little bit later on in the show. Thank you. Yes. Um, Why don't we jump right into it? Why don't you start at the yeah, beginning? Talk, the talk, childhood. Talk about this book so, here and yeah. take us back to obviously uh, before writing the book, and uh, you know uh, the, the day that you, you started, you know, coming up with some of the you know symptoms that uh, you didn't know were Gaucher disease. Well, I started with my uh, my. My journey to diagnosis is actually all of chapter one in, in the book, but it starts off. Uh, I was always a short kid. I always had a stomach. I bruised easily. My family doctor just kept saying, oh, he's, he's going to get a growth spurt. Oh, the belly. Oh, look at his dad. Oh, Bruce is easily. Oh, his iron's low. Here, take some iron pills. It'll get better. They, they never did the, the like they, a, 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 a thorough diagnosis, I should say. Well, being in a let's call it a small rural community like we have here in Timmins, you don't look at those big pictures. You try to, the doctor was trying to go after one symptom at a time. It took till uh, 1995 when I had to get my gallbladder taken out for the doctor to realize there's 
something wrong. And that doctor was not a family doctor. He was my surgeon. He referred me to a hematologist who did a bone marrow test. And I got to tell you, don't have one if you don't need it. It hurts. And she <sighs> thought that she was diagnosing someone who had leukemia. But that is one of the very common misdiagnoses for Gaucher disease. They think it's leukemia. They think or, it's leukemia because a lot of the symptoms do align. So I have here actually a mug that I received many years ago. And it says, were you expecting leukemia? Splenomegaly and or thrombocytopenia. So splenomegaly being an enlarged spleen, thrombocytopenia being reduced platelets. Reduced platelets is what causes the easy bruising and the, um, the, the easy bruising and the, the, the easily to, to bleed. Mm -hmm. Or when you do get a cut, you bleed for long periods of time because you're not clotting. Well, when you add hot water or coffee, coffee in the mug, it actually will reveal saying, uh, rule out malignancy, it's Gaucher disease. So this mug is one of a few that I know that exist in, I'll say in the wild, that don't weren't given to hematologists. So it's kind of a, a, a good... Nice little keepsake. Nice little you. keepsake for myself, yeah. which is the whole point of this, is rare diseases are commonly misdiagnosed or totally missed to be diagnosed because there's, they're so rare. And speaking of, I, I can't help but notice there's a bit of humor in that mug, right? I mean, it's hard for me. To, it's kind of going over my head with all the eight syllable words, but like it's a, you, you talk about those jokes that are like very niche. <laughs> that was written on the cup. It's like, so do you get it? You're, you're sipping yeah. it at work. <laughs> but it, it's, this was made for hematologists to share the word of, hey, there could be this out there. Um, I'm also sitting on the board of the National Goshi Foundation of Canada, which we have done national uh, campaigns to be to educate hematologists and general practitioners of the existence of Gaucher disease and it's never the it, it's always the last thing on their mind because they're taught in med school about a lot of these rare disorders for one day mm -hmm. they get a quick overview for for I'll say lysosomal storage disorders which is what my disorder is it's actually the most common in the lysosomal storage disorder but it's the least known because I don't look sick. It's an invisible disorder. You hear of people who have uh, MPS. I'm not going to try to say what it is because it's an 18 syllable Even word. Even bigger than yeah, this. Yeah. <laughs> um, you hear about people with Tay-Sachs. You hear about people like, because these are more physically visible disorders. Um, so when there's one in the community, like we had someone here in the community, um, who had MPS and a lot of the people in town knew who she was because she was also very busy in the community, but you knew who she was because of her stature, because of the effects the disorder had on her. I walk around and say, I have Gaucher disease. Everyone's like, okay. I go to the hospital for something unrelated and they ask me like, oh, do you have any medical conditions? I, I have Gaucher disease. And they have no clue. What so you're kind about. of a big and deal, right? The nurse is like, I heard of that. Like, so you've heard of me. <laughs> well, and, and that's that's the thing. Yeah, one, one, of, one in 200 Canadians have Gaucher disease. One in 10,000 worldwide. So no, no, it's uh, one uh, of 200. One of 200. So there's 200 Canadians with Gaucher disease, and I'm one of one, them. One of the 200. There's... About ten thousand worldwide, worldwide. Who have it. You guys must have a group chat, right? Like, do you, do well, you, do you compare we, different, you know, symptoms. We and... have uh, Facebook groups. We have a uh, a list serve, and we're constantly bouncing stuff off of each other, asking for help and providing help where we where we can. Because even though we're so few, we've we learned to help each other out. We have to advocate for ourselves and advocate for the others as well. That must be an incredible experience to have something so rare. And you, you talk about coming from a rural community. The, the idea that that was going to get diagnosed right then and there being already so small and isolated and now being able to connect with people with that disease. I'm not formulating my question very well, but you get where I'm going? Like to be able to have that in the modern age to connect one in 200 in Canada, you never would have met that person 30, 25 years ago. Well, when I was first diagnosed, uh, which is actually what, chapter two goes through it was my first ever visit but before i got that visit i got told this this term gaucher disease 
from the hematologist here in Timmins. Of course, the internet was not what it is today. I had encyclopedias that at high school. I had, and you go online, the little bit that was there made it seem very scary that I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to die. But that's, that's what was out there at the time. Then I went to see my doctor for the first time at Sick Kids. So this is uh, March 19th, 96. Okay. And I walk into this hospital and I'm like, wow, this is, because I've only ever been at St. Mary's or at, at the time, the newly made uh, TADH. TADH. And I walk into this hospital and it was absolutely massive. This big, huge atrium with glass ceilings. It had characters that are suspended in midair in the middle of this atrium. And I'm in awe, like, this is a hospital? How could this be a hospital? But then I met the doctor and I realized I'm really lucky. So that doctor, Dr. Uh, Joe Clark, was one of the five experts worldwide in Gaucher disease. Oh, wow. When I graduated mm -hmm. from sick kids and I went across the street to Mount Sinai Hospital, I went from one of the experts to another expert, Dr. Dominic Amato, who just recently uh, retired um, in this whole COVID thing and passed it on to now my doctor for it, Dr. Nemo, who is an excellent doctor. And uh, I hope he got the email and might, might, be, to, might be tuning, tuning in. in. Dr. Nemo, hey. If, if you are, yeah. nice to see I, you again. I know uh, uh, Syl a Sylvie Jolie uh, tuning in. Is, is that, is that, is that the, the missus? No, that's the sister-in-law. Oh, sister-in-law. All right. Hi, Sylvie. She was uh, saying hello to you earlier. She said hello, and I also saw my cousin Mark, who uh, everybody, in everybody earlier. tuning in. And uh, Claude, you didn't put hashtag in front of there to get entered in yeah, the draw. Yeah, need to have the hashtag. Hashtag Gaucher and uh, capital G A U C H E R will have a chance to win uh, a copy of Pierre Jolie's My Gaucher uh, Expedition. Now uh, we should say, uh, if anybody's looking for this book, uh, uh, if your chances are terrible to win uh, tonight, you can you can purchase these through your website. Can you not? You can. It's available on Amazon. On, uh, they're on Amazon. Uh, you can also cool. order it at uh, at Kohl's. They they can't have it in store because I forgot to add a spot here that had the price. Uh, mm -hmm. But they, you can order it through their website, and you can also uh, and so on Amazon. It's on paperback. It's on hardcover. It's on uh, Kindle, and I'm currently recording it for Audible, okay. which I tell you is not an easy thing it's to do. Thing they to do. have a very strict set of rules for your noise floor and Monotone your own and everything else. Uh, it's, it's tough. And I, I keep recording and having to re-record a section over and over again and, and cleaning out all the, the background noise and everything. And uh, it, it, it's, it's taking quite a while to get that through. I might need our, to borrow some of you your, or our segment studio. You, you can use one of our studios, soundproof, nice and soundproof. In there. I might need to do that. Cause it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, come on, it's tough sure. to, to, yeah. to record it at home, even though I I try to isolate all noises and I have a good mic in front of me. Best hey. take ever. You know, the garbage truck comes by and honks its horn at you. Or <laughs> that's that's the thing with living <laughs> near near town. There's yeah. always noise around you. The worst one right now is the, or the noise of the skidoos as they zoom by. So. Yes. I, I live across Gillies, so you can imagine like that gets amped. But on the, on the benefit in the summer, I get to hear the rock concerts for free across the lake, but give and take. Anyways, the um, we left off at your uh, you just got diagnosed because they had checked out your your so yeah so during a gallbladder surgery in at, in December of ninety five, yeah. the doctor found that I was bleeding way too much. Sent me to the hematologist, did the bone marrow test, found what they thought was Gaucher disease. Sent the slides and then yeah, it, it is. Let's go see the doctor. And I, when I first met the doctor and I got more information, I realized, okay, I'm A, not alone, and B, I'm not going to die, which is, well, that's what you, you know, you're, you're, you're 15 years old. You're like, what's going to happen with me? And again, when you're Googling, uh, you know, back then, I guess uh, Google wasn't even around back well, then, there's, but there's, uh, every, yeah, everything, everything points to Ask death. You yeah, know? A lot made it sound there's, way there's worse no, than uh, as Siri back then. No, Siri didn't exist then. <laughs> um, and then as I, uh, as I learned more, and then I found out that to get treatment you had to be worse than I was I'm like okay I'm okay and now I actually have a, a a name for what's going on it explained my belly it was the spleen and liver who were enlarged that were 
extending my belly. It explained the bruising. That's the, the thrombocytopenia, the low platelets. For, for a while as a kid, I'd, I'd bruise for at almost any touch at some points. Um, it's like the normal platelet count is between 150 and 400. My platelet count at diagnosis was 42. Holy smokes. Which is starting to get in the very dangerous range. And it's gotten normal. It's gotten to that point where it's manageable. Things generally are pretty good. But throughout the years, I had many nosebleeds. And I still get quite frequent nosebleeds because my nose just has that much damage. Um, same as shaving. It's not always the easiest. And I'll end up with you get a shaving really cut, bad. It, it bleeds or you get bad razor burn. get because... bad razor burn. Even with good razors, good shaving creams, and proper technique, everything. And I mean, that's been, all due to the Gaucher disease. All, all linking to issues from the Gaucher disease. Wow. Absolutely um, crazy. So throughout the years, and I, I just kept on doing what I was doing. I actually, in that time, went to Germany with the Army cadets. Mm -hmm and had a blast. I was there for four and a half weeks, doing some touring, some training. It was amazing. Uh, and then the year later is when everything changed. That's where things started to happen inside the, the book a little bit more. I got what's called a bone crisis. So it's actually a lack of oxygen to the bone, uh, which for me, it happened in my femur up by my, my hip. Okay. And I could not walk. I couldn't put pressure on it, even though the, the pressure didn't hurt. It just, I didn't want to put pressure because of the pain. And I just, I was out of it for a while. That, that bone crisis got me to start treatment. So I was in August of 98 when I started treatment with something called Cerazyme, which is an enzyme replacement therapy. So the, as you mentioned earlier, there's a buildup of that, fatty, that lipid yeah. in the spleen, liver, bone marrow, blah, 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 blah. Well, the, I, the buildup is there because I don't produce this enzyme or I don't produce it correctly, but it has no effect. The enzyme replacement therapy is done through intravenous and it is the enzyme so that my body can get rid of the buildup. But keep in mind, I get the, uh, I get the enzyme and I go to here, but the enzyme only lives so long in the body and I start to decline. And as the weeks go by for the next treatment, mm -hmm. I get back to a good level, but I start feeling some more fatigue and other you effects from it. Extra tired. Then I get yeah. my meds and I get better again. That's the way things went for many years. Um, and then there's throughout the years, they came up with another kind of treatment, which is called a substrate inhibitor. So instead of an IV every two weeks, it was a pill and depending on which one you'd get, was either twice a day or three times a day. Mm -hmm. So I went on a clinical trial for one of them. I was on it for many years and things were going great at first, but for me, it didn't work very well. It works great for a lot of others. Um, it's just, it depends on how your body reacts to certain medications. Um, after I got off of that one is where the book progressed a little bit further. And uh, I had, at this point, uh, I had multiple um, porticats. So these are uh, little like pick plastic. Lines? It's like a pick line, but it's all under the skin. So it's just a little dome under the skin with a little piece of rubber and a tube going into the subclaving like vein. So the vein, so the vein just underneath the the, your collarbone. Okay. So you would take a needle, and normally it's a nurse who does this, but I learned to do it all myself. You would support the portacath, insert the needle through the skin into this, and I'd then hook up the line to my IV bag and let it go for the hour it would need for the treatment. And the third one, which is after I came off of that clinical trial, didn't work very well. It kept getting pinched by the collarbone. Okay. And over time, it developed a leak. So that leak made it that I couldn't use it anymore. So, so they had to take out? That pick line? Out went that porta calf. Porta calf. In went number four. That porta calf is what made me write my book. Um, everything seemed to be going good for the first few weeks. I seemed to be healing well. 
I had my yearly visit in Toronto with, and my nurse in Toronto took mm -hmm. the stitches out. Everything's going great. Then I started getting some pain end of day on a Saturday. And Sunday morning, I called my mom, like, come, come get me. Like, we're going to the hospital. I, I, there's, there's something wrong. There's something wrong. And 20 minutes later, she's still not like, hello, let's go. We've gotta, we got to go to the hospital. So go to the hospital, and they tried everything. We were there from 3 in the morning till about noon. Couldn't see anything wrong. The surgeon, Dr. Vugarv, even came in and tried using the portacath, and everything worked great. Like, we don't see anything wrong. Here, take these chiclets. I mean, take these Tylenol 3s. Yeah. And go home. They don't and have any have effect a, on me. Have a nice me. day. Yeah, just a little they, painkiller. Oh. They, they don't have an effect on me. So, but, you know, all right, I'll take them because you're telling me to take them. Two days later, I get a phone call. Hi, this is the doctor at Emerge. Can you come in? We need to talk. Okay. Go to the hospital. Look at... Um, I, I get to triage. I give my health card and the number that we do here at TDH. She looks at my health card and goes right through here. VIP treatment. Yeah, yeah. Do like not she, pass she, go. She do not collect right 200. In, you know, straight in the back. I walk no, into no the hallway. <laughs> the nurse sees me. Mr. Jolly, you're here. Right this way. Holy smokes. So they knew they, how severe it, uh, it was they, getting they, to they, that point. They got the results of my first blood test which said I had an infection. They didn't quite know how bad it was at that time. That Tuesday, they took blood tests and urine sample, found out that my blood was near septic, my kidneys were near failure. Holy smokes. This is now two and a half weeks after the surgery. So it accelerated quick. So I was in the hospital for a week. And then when I got out, uh, at that point, the plan was stay on the antibiotics and we'll see how things go. Well, a few days later, I get a phone call from... Dr. Vugar's office saying, we just want to confirm your surgery for Friday. But that wasn't the plan on Monday <laughs> when I got discharged. What's going on? So turns out they were afraid of the infection going further. And because it was because of where the infection was and like they needed to act for they, they needed to get it out. Yeah, okay. Um, so four days, four weeks to the day it got put in is when I got it removed. Now, these are normally good for five, six, seven, eight, ten years. Um, it just never, like, it never occurred to me to have to get it taken out so quick. That got me very depressed. And the continuing parts of everything else I went through from there just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Which... Finally, and then I got another portacath put in, which was supposed to be the end of it. But my body said, no, it, it did not want to keep it in. So when that one when had to be taken out, I didn't know what I was going to do anymore. And that's where everything changes. I called uh, Christine White, the president of the National Gaucher Foundation of Canada. Mm -hmm. She, who's a great friend of mine, I've known her for ages. And we were on the board together since 2014 or 2004. She's told me, it's like, Pierre, you've got to change meds. You've got to take control. And that's when I said, you're right. I was in cruise control listening to everyone here in Timmins, and I should have been listening to my body and said, there's something As wrong. As they say, follow your guts. You need, you need to follow your so gut. So I took control, switched to a different medication, which did not need the intravenous anymore. And uh, that's to, to try to get everything in line and get myself out of my, my, my depression that I was in is when I started writing about what I went through. That evolved after I mentioned it to a few people that it could help others. And as a rare disease advocate, I can only advocate so much for myself, but I need to also raise awareness instead of just advocating. It's when I thought this could make a book. Mm -hmm. And Voila, this here is it where, is. This is where we are today with... This is where it is. Now, you wanted me to read uh, part of the uh, the intro. Anybody uh, going to buy this book, which uh, hopefully you do, because uh, you know we're, we're going to get into the, the cost of the meds, which 
Uh, it's not your run of the mill bottle of Tylenol, you know, over the counter. We're we're talking what hundreds of thousands of dollars for these these medications it's about that you're on. Three hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. A year. A year. Now that's not uh, th- hopefully not out of your pocket. Uh, thankfully, the treatment I have right now is covered by OHIP. Um, some of the other treatments that are available are not as lucky. The one I switched to in 2018 costs uh, 27000 a quarter. Holy and I had crap. to go on the Trillium Fund to be able to get access to it without having to have to figure out how to pay $27,000. Well, $27,000 is absolutely ridiculous. Like, when, you, when you think of, you know, necessities, you know, drugs that need to be uh, out there, obviously a rare disease such as uh, Gaucher disease. You know, one, one, one of 200 in Canada, you, you, like who, who's got 27, I don't have $27,000. A quarter. You know, I don't, <laughs> I don't even have 10 bucks in my pocket, let alone $27,000. So thankfully you said the Trillium Fund covers this. It covered it. There was a copay yeah. I still had to deal with, but it was not as bad as trying to raise money for the whole, for the whole shebang. And, uh, and now I've switched back, but in the world, there's some places that don't have even access to the treatment. Because it's so expensive that the governments there won't pay for it, and insurance companies don't want to cover it as well. Um, even in the United States, there's uh, it's a constant fight of which which insurance company will help cover the cost, even with a copay. Like you think so they, need you to, have the they need to treatment. rewrite uh, the priorities for the healthcare when it comes to uh, obviously situations Is, like this to make it. Without, readily available for anybody who, uh, you know, it's not going to be every day someone's going to wake up with a rare disease. But if you do, you know, the, the these are the drugs that should be covered. Like even looking across Canada, uh, PEI for the longest time had no patients. And then one patient got found. Um, who's possibly watching. Watching the who's, show tonight. Patrick, if you're watching. We, we have all, all, two, all 200 in Canada watching uh, this episode right now. So. <laughs> If or he's, 199 more. <laughs> so if he's if he's watching, like yeah. he'll he'll know it's him. But he, the the access to treatment was just not there because he wasn't sick enough. When it got to the point where he needed to get treatment, there was no access to that uh, for him because we the, we had to fight the government saying please provide him with this these medications. It will help him lead a productive life. Mm-hmm. My symptoms without treatment would be so bad that I could be up to a million dollar burden on the healthcare system a year. Holy crap. But $350,000 and I'm productive. That's I'm here keeping you with, you know, with you're hauling heat, heavy printers the uh, printing, around uh, the printer. city with core business solutions. <laughs> you know, you, you, as I say, you never judge a, a person or a book by its cover. And again, uh, you would never know that you're battling such a rare disease so because i i live with the rare disease but i don't let the rare disease defeat you defeat me i don't let it rule my life um because it's that's that's what it is is uh, if if you have the ability to do something because you you have access to treatment you should do it um even during the summer past two years and i've already registered for this year i've been part of the uh, the Great Cycle Challenge, yes. raising funds for the Hospital for Sick Kids uh, Cancer Foundation. Uh, last year, I raised uh, $2,700. I rode 500 kilometers on my bike in the month of August. Nice. Um, and up to that point, I mean, it was at like the 21st of August. I finished my 500 that I planned to do, and the bike broke. Yeah. Well, the bike was listening to it. So I had it, to. It said uh, it was listening, saying only 500k, uh, Pierre. Let's not go. On, let's not uh, overdo it. The here. bike was begging <laughs> you to stop. The, yeah, the bike, <laughs> bike was begging you to stop at 504. Doing multiple yeah. 36 kilometer trips in a week. Uh, took a stroll on the bike, and after even crashing a few times, having to make some some rides short because I had to go do some repairs. It got me through to the end. It was making weird noise for the last little bit. And then I went to and go died. out a few days later, and it didn't feel right. Now, so, is it tuned up for uh, for this year's uh, challenge? It's currently hanging in the garage. It's all repaired, ready to go. As soon as the snow's away, I'm going to start getting back on well, the we'll, trails. We'll, we'll definitely and, support you here. You just uh, you just knock on our door here. Studio 67, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll jump on board with that. Uh, we'll, we'll raise some bucks for you. Are you guys jumping on bikes, too? Or? Well, uh, who, who <laughs> when knows? When it's time, I'll put the bike right here. 
We see, I'm not even yeah. part of the team, and I'm volunteering them to ride right. bikes with you. Like, you can ride bikes and come out. Can you picture Mitch on a bike? Oh, hey, well, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I think you said Studio 67. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got stairs. It's a mountain bike. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go down the stairs. Speaking of stairs, you, you lugged a printer up that uh, flight of stairs. Again, you know, you, you wouldn't know that you're battling such a, a rare disease in uh, Gauthier disease. That, that copier is 350,000, uh, sorry, 350 pounds is the weight of, is the base part of that copier that, yes, we lugged up what? the stairs to one of the, one of the other tenants of tenants this building. Upstairs, yeah. That same tenant is where I also delivered one to a mine or to a mine site, I should say, that's in development, 40 kilometers past Matheson. We had to bring it up a flight of stairs there as well yesterday. How do so, you get something that's 350 pounds up a flight of stairs <laughs> that is also super expensive and could crush the guy underneath as well as damage the expensive? Carefully. Uh, carefully. Yes. One step at a time. Like you guys just lifting it from the bottom? Wait, well, it's on a dolly. It's on a dolly. Okay, it's on a dolly. Okay, okay, okay. Of, course, of course, of course. Like you we think have I would two at the bottom to push the weight up and one at the top just to keep it even and make sure it doesn't fall over but you swear i'd never moved a wood stove before but now all of a sudden it's a printer and i'm like i'm out of my league here technologically so but again you know it never as i say never say never you never judge a book by its cover and again pierre uh, jolly my gauche gauche uh, expedition pick it up go to uh, amazon pick it up and buy it online because if you have amazon prime you can read it on kindle unlimited you can read it on no, kindle no cost to you and uh, or if you buy a paperback or a hardcover, they're available there for order. You go to facebook.com slash my Gauche Expedition. My first pinned post has a link that gets to, you to, to your book. It gets to your local Amazon. So if you're in the, the state, so Teresa, I see you've been commenting. Hi, Teresa. Off. Uh, so she's, she's down in the U.S. Uh, she's down in the U.S. Show. So she's, okay. it'll get her to amazon.com. If you're out in Israel where there's a big Gauche population, it'll get you to your local Amazon there as well be able to order the book in and it'll get made in one of multiple worldwide uh, uh, publishing houses that yeah. the uh, Amazon has. Uh, these ones that are holding in our hands right now were printed in Canada. My nice. first batch of author copies that okay. I ordered came out of the States. Nice. And again, somebody who's going to win one tonight, if you put uh, the hashtag Gaucher in uh, the comment thread, even Teresa, no matter where the winner lives, we will get this book to you signed by Pierre Jolly himself. And again, you wanted to read this, uh, this introduction in this book right now, so I'm going to read this right now. Uh, not all expeditions have to do with tall mountains or wild jungles. My expedition happens due to a rare disorder called Gaucher disease. The treatment of Gaucher disease is a bad thing that happens along the way. My hardship just happens to be something that changed my personal outlook on life, and I've decided that writing a book about it, even if only five people end up reading it, now six, Seven with Mitch, eight with uh, when Klomp gets back. Uh, it is something that I have to do to help with my healing. So since I am currently somewhere in some uh, in number seven of the steps, which uh, we're going to chat with after the break here, uh, a few more of the steps uh, of the seven, I guess I have to write a book about it. Only thing is my seven steps are a bit different. And again, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll touch base on uh, some of these steps uh, how about we take a, a break we'll uh we'll thank our sponsors i know we have beers in front of us uh because klopp's in uh ko coco we're, we're we we rated uh, klopp's section of the beer fridge so we're going to drink a few beers on the the second half of the show i think we can do that and we're uh, we're going to award uh, the winner of the book and we'll chat with those seven steps with pierre uh, right after this there ronnie And join Planet Fitness today. Get started for only $29 down and only $15 a month. And the best part is you can cancel at any time. 705-242-7360. Download the free Planet Fitness app and join today. And DAP Cleaning Solutions. Residential commercial cleaning excellence guaranteed. Call Andrew N. for cleaning services, carpet cleaners, janitorial servicing. And how about stripping and waxing floors, windows, any job that you need cleaned or sanitized. Call today, 705-465-3500. Book now for your carpet cleaning strip and wax jobs for the month of March for your commercial unit today. Call for your free quote. And the Timmins Ringette Association, they are currently looking for officials to apply to ref in their upcoming 2023 Northeast Regional Championship Tournament in Timmins the weekend of March 31st to April 2nd. If you want to apply, apply now at Timmins Ringette. 
www.creativeboutique.com. And Creative Boutique and Supplies, 705-372-8190. Shop Mona Goche's collection of spring collections today. You can shop today on Facebook. And the cooperators, Timmons, looking to sock away some TFSAs, an RRSP, maybe a mutual fund. Contact Sebastian Vermet and his team today at the cooperators, Timmons, 239 Wilson Avenue. Call today, 705-264-4395 for your consultation. And Dare Timmons getting set for a free swim coming up on March the 16th. Another free day with Dare and Bring Your Swim Trunks, March 16th between 1.15 and 2.45 at the Timmins Sportsplex. And free estimates with V&M Renovations. How about a door, a window, a reno? Do you need some drywall plastering done? How about a kitchen, bathroom, or a bedroom reno? Maybe you need some mini excavating done. Call Max and Justin today at V&M Renovations for your free estimate. 705-372-3832. And the BIA, the Downtown Timmins Business Improvement Association. You can visit them online at downtowntimmins.com or visit them at their new location in downtown, 85 Pine Street South, Suite 108, or call 705-264-8733. And the Ontario Youth Championships are coming to the Porcupine Ski Runners the weekend of March 3rd through 5th. Visit more details and more details on this championship online at PorcupineSkiRunners.com. And Rabino's Petro Can. When you fill up in Sopo, you stop in to check out Frank Rabino at Rabino's Petro Can. Located at 4310 Herald Avenue in South Porcupine. Call today, 705 235 4797. And Jackpot Time Gaming Entertainment. Join Trudy Prue for some bingo. Progressives, Taptics Gaming Room, Vegas style games, and they're now fully licensed for you. And they're also open Monday through Sunday, 9 a.m. to 2, located at 251 First Avenue. And Core Business Solutions, they are your Apple authorized service provider in the city of Timmins. 264 Third Avenue, Suite 100 in Timmins. Call today, 705 531 3355 today. And Imagine Cinema 6, we've been waiting for this one for a while. Creed 3 opens up on Friday, but the best part is it will open up on Thursday this week at Imagine Cinemas. Check out your tickets and showtimes at ImagineCinemas.com. And seal the deal with this guy, Albert Seal from Claim Post Realty Limited Brokerage. All his latest listings can be found at AlbertSeal.com. You can call today to book your appointment with Albert, 705-465-3494. 93 to have Albert seal your deal. And Larone, all the fun with Larone and Bonhomme Carnival. Well, how about the month of March? Look at all these entertaining events coming up for you for the month of March. You can check them out online at laronetimmons.ca for tickets. And still time to register with the Northeastern Catholic District School Board. Kindergarten registration is on. Book your child now online at www.ncdsb.on.ca or call the school to book. And we're back. We just had to uh, crack Cheers. a few uh, brewskis here. Yeah, and, happy uh, yes. rare disease day. I'm not sure that's the right way to put it. Probably but, uh, uh, not the right way uh, to acknowledge it, but uh, you know, we, we are supporting uh, people with rare diseases. Again, you said there's, what, uh, 7,000 rare diseases? 7,000 in the world. In the world. That are currently known of, and there's more found all the time. Because as medical research figures out that a certain symptom is actually of one disease and not another, um, there's always something new. Something new? Just like treatments um there's right now something that's cutting edge with on gauche disease is there's multiple companies who are working on gene therapy essentially a cure for the patient who gets it because then i no longer need to keep getting my my iv every two weeks um, is that is that we have to go every two weeks right you're, now you're it's, getting an iv it's an iv every two weeks and currently my nurse comes drives in from uh from elk lake wow. because the nursing agency doesn't have anyone local because they are they are they hiring? Is it because they don't have anybody to uh, I, to service Timmins? There's not a lot of patients. Or that what they what need kind of training serve. do they need to be a part of the nurse uh, the nurse union there? Well, they there's quite a lot of yeah. material they have to go through because there's a wide variety of disorders that they they do deal with. A lot of them are quite rare. A lot of the medications, much like mine, are quite expensive. 
So it is a very specialized agency for that. And uh, so Lisa was supposed to come today, but I'm kind of busy today. On the so show. So I'm, she, is, I'm she here. Com- is she coming tomorrow? She's coming tomorrow instead. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And at and least I, also tomorrow the roads will be a bit more clear. Well, yes. Yeah, you wouldn't drive want to from Elk Lake. Well, Elk Lake yeah. is a, a bit of a jaunt. Uh, so she comes in religiously every two weeks and every- administers your, your IV. Now, mm-hmm. without the IV, what would uh, obviously the, the IV keeps you going. If you didn't have that IV, you'd, uh, I'd you'd have, to go downhill again. I'd have very bad fatigue. Um, I'd get some, uh, more bone pain. I'd get... Uh, progressively worse with like bone crises. My bones would get um, like brittle, very brittle. There's uh, in some literature from back in 95 when I got diagnosed that had someone who wrote that she rolled over in bed and broke a hip. Oh, just that's, that's how weak the, that's the bo- how weak the bones, the bones can, can become. Wow. And uh, for the longest time in the, uh, a lot of the, in order to help control the symptoms, they would remove the person's spleen. And thankfully now they don't do that because the spleen is very useful. It's important. And now, uh, keep, yeah. I know what the spleen does, but for the audience out there who obviously doesn't know what the spleen does, what does the spleen do? <laughs> the spleen is one of the organs that helps to clean up uh, old unused blood cells that need to get recycled, um, which is one of the multiple uh, parts of the body that have these uh, the lysosomes that would have that contain the enzyme that would get rid of uh, the the lipid that I currently can't. Wow, absolutely so uh, get, amazing! Don't want to get overly medical because we do have a wide variety of yeah, people I have that are tuning questions in. Questions about half of those words, but <laughs> I'm 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 gonna. I mean, I I could start spiting off stuff like heptasplenomegaly. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> sounds like a like a we'll, we'll song. keep we'll keep it si- si- simple <laughs> terms, but again, uh, mo- some of the terminology uh, is in the book. And I, I wrote the book in such a way that it's accessible for pretty much everyone We're to read. Reading for dummies. It's uh, I do put the big words, then I explain what they are. Okay. And I wrote it very con- uh, conversationally. It's almost as if if I was to start reading the book right now to you, we'd we'd sit here and. It would just sound like if we're having a conversation. Yeah. It wouldn't sound like I'm actually reading a book. Like medical terms on Gaucher disease. Yeah, just like um, I've explained it many times, and it's also in some of the literature, and I put it in the book as well, that, like, for instance, for me, for Gaucher disease, you got to look at a sink. A regular sink, someone who has no Gaucher disease, water goes in, water goes out the drain. There's no issues. With Gaucher disease, you have a uh, you have a blockage. So there's just teeny tiny little drip that goes out, but that means there's a buildup in the sink. My current treatment, the enzyme replacement therapy that I get, mm-hmm. is like Drano. You put it in, and drain it gets clear, but it, it right clogs back up again slowly. So you got to keep putting Drano every two weeks, or got to call your landlord or something wrong. <laughs> That's, the, that, that's where your nurse comes in every two weeks. To she comes in to pump in the Drano for you. And uh, the other treatment that I mentioned, uh, the, the pill, the substrate inhibitor, it stops the body from making that lipid that I can't get rid of. It just blocks it from being made. It gets broken down into other things instead. That's like turning off the tap. If there's no water going in the sink, the tiny little bit that still trickles lets the buildup go away and you end up normal regardless that your drain is mainly clogged yeah. you end up with least amount of symptoms now that's a great way to think about it and it's it it, it simplifies the the explanation of what happens in the body but it's exactly what you need in something that i'm trying to make available to raise awareness of gaucher disease but as well as to raise awareness for or, or uh, to give a um, a feel-good story that at the end of everything I went through from the bone crisis that started my my uh, my treatment to the my getting my my multiple porticats and the infection and going through the the mental anguish I went through to be able to uh, where it made me write the book to get out of is like there's there's a lot of ups and downs with a lot of rare disorders and there's always a way out. And in my case, it was writing it out. Mm-hmm. 
and in in writing it and i'm actually writing part two if i do get on that gene therapy trial that i'm mm -hmm. hoping to get on that's going to be part of my now if you get on that trial is does that mean you uh that's going to be a full that's your full-time expedition now it's going to be i get the, the the treatment it's it's it can be very scary there's two versions that are being made one where the the cells are modified out of the body one where uh, a virus is introduced in your body to modify your cells in it yeah there it sounds scary and there's a lot involved but once you're done it's as if you no longer have the disorder so the first person that worldwide adva that advanced the first person worldwide to get one of those treatments um is someone that I know, she lives out in Alberta. Her doctor just months later said, if I was to look at your chart, I would, as a new patient, I would say you've never had Gaucher disease. Wow, it's that, that advanced, but again, and, probably pretty pricey with this, uh, this trial. And that's gonna be once it's out of a trial, how are people gonna get access to it? Well, because right now you said your current, uh, like your IV that you're getting every two weeks is what, $350,000 a year? Yeah. And then the, the enzyme replacement, or sorry, the gene therapy could be multiple millions. And our, if you look at it, though, 10 years of treatment will pay off the one gene therapy, and then that's it. But is the government going to want to fork over $3 million for a treatment that takes more or less three months to do from start to finish and then never pay again? Because that's a lot up front for them. So it's that that's going to be the, the constant battle. And that's what it is for a lot of rare disorders. It's to get the diagnosis. It's trial and error right now. And then to have the proper info and then to get access to treatment. Because there's there's places that you're you're you don't get a choice of treatment. You get told this is what you get. This is what you get or you get nothing. And even in um, the United States it's uh, certain insurance companies will say you'll only get this version of the treatment because even the enzyme replacement therapy I'm on there's there's three companies who've made three different versions you're gonna laugh at this and everyone's gonna probably call me weird for this afterwards but the one that I'm on is the enzyme is grown in what we call a Cho cell which is actually a Chinese hamster ovary but okay. there's no signs of that same way I was born, actually. The there's no, it's, everything is filtered out and it's just the enzyme. Okay. And there's currently two treatments, two sets of those treatments currently in my fridge at the house, nice and safe with the rest of my beer. <laughs> there's the other two. One is made with, uh, is the, the enzyme is grown using uh, human skin T cells. And the last one, it's grown instead of in these big stainless steel vats, it's grown in these bags. And the cell that grows it is actually from carrot cells. So in these bioreactors where the, the enzyme is being made, all you see is a big orange bag. So medical science is just gardening for nerds. <laughs> Pretty much. Because they, they figured out how to modify the Chinese hamster ovary, the carrot cells, and human T cells to continuously manufacture the enzyme. So they, in the bioreactors, they, they make it. And th these companies don't make just for Gaucher disease. They also make for other lysosome source disorders. The, the one company that, made, that got the first one, their first treatment was actually made with um, human placenta. They were using that to culture the enzyme. And then they made a new version with these Chinese hamster ovary cells. But it, it's, it's still, at the end of the day, it's identical to the human enzyme. And it, it's, they've, they've used Gaucher disease. So it's uh, Genzyme is the one who made it. They're, they use Gaucher disease or, or Gaucher treatments to help fund more research. So thanks to us, and we're one of the more expensive ones out there in the lysosomal source disorder field, we're the expensive one because it's funding other treatments. This company's making treatments for, they now got bought out by Sanofi, um, but they're making, no, Pfizer, something, I forget. They make 
treatments for uh, for Pompeii, for Fabry, for Tay-Sach, for some rare cancers. They they just they keep expanding everything that they do to be able to help more and more people because everyone and and sitting here there's you know there's three million Canadians living with a rare disorder. That they don't know of some of them might not know they have it. They so just, they just went. They're going through the paces probably before you started to so you know, get to where you are in this book. So at uh, 35 million Canadians, there's yeah. about three million that have a rare disorder. There's what 42 thousand here in Timmins. There could potentially be 4,200 people living around us that have a rare disorder, but not everyone they knows that they have it. And they're just going to grab the over-the-counter Tylenols or your normal medicine and, you know, trying to, as they say, put the Band-Aid on the solution. You talked about this, right? The, the advocating for yourself and, or like, if someone tells you it's just this, it's just this, it's just this, but your, your gut's telling you it's something more than that. It's, as a child, if my family doctor took all of my symptoms and put it together in what it probably would have came up as, Gaucher disease. But they didn't have a way to do that back then. So they'd rely on their medical training and their medical books. But do you think they'd have in a medical book a disorder that affects 10,000 people worldwide? The, 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 the books are already thick, but there's so many other things that they need to cover in those books yeah. that can't be covered in perfect detail. Just like in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. When they, the, the entry on Earth, mostly harmless. That's it. That's the entry on, so is that, that's similar entry in medical books on a lot of rare disorders. Because there's no, there's no room. Absolutely crazy. It's so, fake. How, how, how rare, you know, it, it is. And, you know, people could be walking around with uh, absolutely no clue. Because, and, and looking at me, I don't look sick. You don't look sick at all. And again, and, you know, talking to you, I, I know you from the rock games, uh, you know, you're uh, working the camera up in the media gondola to, uh, you know, working as uh, core business solutions, you know, tech you know, putting printers around there, I, I, you would have no clue. Again, you don't judge someone from, uh, you know, from the, the, the cover of their book, realizing that uh, you are fighting. Well, you a, could judge me from the cover well, of my book. Well, you could. Smiling. And there he is. With yeah. the captain's foot up. And, and again, that's, uh, where's that? Uh, High Falls, the High picture Falls. was taken? Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm sure there's probably everybody in uh, Timmins who's taken a walk to High Falls has stepped where you're standing on that book. Well, right I kind of have to practice. go out. The, you see the water's right there behind me. Not everyone will get out on those rocks, but uh, I've uh, I, I've been out on those rocks many times. Many times. It's like I love Are heading. you doing some photography as well, too? Eh? I do some yeah. photography. This picture was taken by my niece. Okay. Uh, but with my camera, I'm like, here, hold my camera. I'm going to take a picture right there. You're going <laughs> to you're gonna step out, and that's why it wraps around the back of the book. Um, you have to include the nature around here. You Where do. else... Can you just drive five minutes in almost any direction? Amen. Drop a line Amen. in the water. Be, yeah, drop a line in the water. Put your feet on the dock. Go fishing. Uh, you know, we, we live up here in, as they say, God's country. Right? Is, it, uh, is it spring yet? Can I throw my boat pretty, back pretty in the water? Pretty soon. <laughs> well, you see, see how late uh, the sun is setting now uh, in the afternoon. We're getting closer to spring. Can't wait. Can't wait at all. And uh, we're getting closer to uh, the book to give away here. Let's uh, see if Ronnie can fire up the, uh, the giveaway tool. Anybody who put in the hashtag uh, Gaucher in the comments section, capital G, it's got to be exact or it won't pick up the hashtag. We're uh, going to give an autographed copy from Pierre Jolie himself. I'd love to see a... He even brought the Sharpie. Look at that. I was ready. He's ready to go. So the winner's name pops up. You're, uh, you're going to get a copy. No matter where you live, uh, you'll, you'll get a copy. So are we ready to fire it there, Ronnie? Let's fire it up here. And the winner There's is a wheel. the I wheel like of it. winning. Ding, 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 ding. Here we go. Get to see how close you are. And then... Ding, 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 ding. And the winner is Amanda St. Jean. There she is. There you go. Amanda, you're going to get a, a signed copy from Pierre Jolie, my Gaucher Expedition. We'll just keep that up there for a second there, Ronnie, yeah. while he gets yeah. uh, her name. Confetti and everything. You know, I would love to see a physical wheel. 
in the Studio 67. Like <laughs> a winner's win. You know what? Yeah. That, that just might happen. And a beautiful lady to like stand there and like wheel it with you. I, we could we could make this happen. We 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 could we could make it happen. He's uh, he's right. Look, personal inscribed uh, copy of Pierre Jolie. Go uh, find it at Amazon. My Gaucher expedition again we're uh we're, we're cel- celebrating the, the right word we were just talking about this we're celebrating rare disease day on february the 28th and again uh, pierre is one of 200 in the fine country of canada who uh, who is currently battling joanne says gonna cost her some special brownies i don't know maybe pierre wants some special brownies <laughs> <laughs> right? stage uh, a copy of the book for some brownies what do you think uh, that might work I do have a couple more copies at home. Yeah, including you're gonna get Ted Gooch going. Uh, the, the camera's all wonky on Friday night's game. What's going on, Pierre? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I also want to sign yours. You want to sign our copy? I too? want to sign your copy. Well, here, we'll fire that over there. But again, we want to thank uh, everybody for uh, hopping in here uh, tonight, uh, joining us for Rare Disease Day. And Pierre Jolie, again, you, you, you wouldn't know it if you saw him on the street, but uh, he's battling Gaucher disease. And again, if you go and find his book on Amazon, Pierre Jolie, My Gaucher Expedition. Uh, funds will go right back to the Gaucher uh, studies. Heard from uh, Pierre himself, medication that he takes every two weeks for his IV is $350,000 a year. So they can definitely use... Uh, the Gaucher uh, expedition money. And again, the money, the proceeds go to, uh, you know, keeping those nurses coming into. Yeah. You know, so some of the funds of the money do go to the National Gaucher Foundation of Canada. We do fund, uh, we help fund research. We help patients where we can. And uh, we, it, it's, it's all about advocacy and, um, and, and awareness. And there's, there's a lot that happens when you first get diagnosed with a rare disorder. There's a lot of questions and we're there for Gaucher disease to be that, that first group that you get a chance to speak to. So we've got on the board, we've got parents and family members of people with Gaucher disease, as well as people with Gaucher as well. Um, and there's still a lot more details in regards to Gaucher disease and rare disorders out there. Um, it's like, I actually noticed Teresa mentioned that, yes, yeah. there are other types of Gaucher disease. I have what's called type one, which is non-neuronopathic. It's, it doesn't involve the brain. There are two types. Um, one which is the uh, the adult neuropathic, where they live a generally normal lifespan, but they mm-hmm. do have some neurological issues. And there is another one that's called type two, uh, which is uh, quite tougher to uh, to hear about. Um, these children tend to only live for about two years. Oh my! And I've got friends of families that are, that or had children who had type two or who currently have type three, it's not easy to see the decline that some of these kids that as they're going through the, the steps, but it's, it, it is, uh, it, it still happens. And I could sit here for hours talking about Gaucher disease. I know looking at the clock, we don't have long left. And I know there's more to, uh, that you might have questions on or something else that I might've forgotten. Yeah, uh, you know, again, that's why, you know, if you pick up a copy, you know, it's all in my Gaucher uh, expedition. Pick it up here, Jolie. And again, if you check him at the, the Rock game, maybe on Friday night, uh, you know, bring a copy to, uh, you know, uh, the Rock game, Mac, and uh, he'll uh, he'll sign it to you. In, in, I'll bring in, my Sharpie. In person. But yeah, we're uh, we're so pleased to, uh, to have had you uh, on the show tonight there, Pierre. Thank you very much. Again, uh, you know, the, the jack of all trades, master of all of them, a core business solutions uh, technician. You'll see him if you're, uh, you know, you want to give a, a quick plug there. You're the Apple service provider in Timmins. We're the uh, authorized Apple service provider for Northeastern Ontario and Northwestern Quebec. We sometimes even get machines mailed to us from the reserves up on the coast uh, and people drive and you're all over the place. Hours from within Quebec to come bring their machines because there's nowhere closer for them to the service and they uh, they come to you and, yeah so from the iphones ipods beats headphones airpods macbooks imacs mac pro uh i i know i've missed some of their stuff that they've Even done down to the printers too obviously and, I, I and then the, the, beyond the apple the core stuff, business solution uh, side yeah we they, do uh, the commercial like, printers from like xerox photocopiers and printers to printer repairs for pretty much any model out there to 
sales and service of computers and laptops and whatever you've got, if we can, we can fix it. Do you, just, do you do fax machines? I do fax machines, but who's got a fax now? Right, it, it, it's rare, but like, that can faxes, you do it? Can you fix my painter? If I wanted a fax machine, could I go to Core Business Solutions? I could, I will we'll sell it to you. I'll install it. I can even listen to the tones and tell you what's wrong. Now, will there be anyone out there for me to fax? <laughs> I'm sure I can find you one number. Probably okay, still one number. Okay. Yeah, yeah my grandparents still have a, a fax machine. All right, I'm going to fax Mark's not. grandparents. There you go. But Core Business Solutions uh, with Pierre. You can also find them at the Rock Game, which uh, you're going to be at uh, Friday night's game. Friday you're night. going to be going to uh, the next Friday's game in Iroquois Falls. It's going to be the Rock in uh, the Igloo. Uh, no, I've, Cochran. I've you're, not, you're not doing that one? I unfortunately have something else that evening. Uh, I only I only need to take care of the home games, okay? Which are are, are the fun ones. Well, I'm not, it's technically a Timmins home game, but uh, I, I see where you're well, getting. Well, technically, it. yes, because yeah. it's played in New York Falls, but unfortunately, I've got a conflict that that evening, anyways. Well, uh, we just wanted to mention on uh, tomorrow night's show, the Iroquois Falls mayor is going to be on this set, Studio 67, talking about that game because he wants to pack the igloo. He wants to uh, show the NOJHL that. Uh, that uh, that arena is suited for another NOJHL team. Well, the Rock came well, they, from they used to have the Abitibi they, Eskimos. We were there at well, one point. They started yeah. as the Golden Bears yeah. then went to Iroquois Falls, and now they're back home where they belong. But, yes, Iroquois Falls can definitely... They can definitely they pack. Can definitely he pack. wants to pack the igloo. We're, uh, we're going to talk to uh, the Iroquois Falls mayor on uh, tomorrow's show, so uh, make sure you're uh, tuned into that. Uh, we want to uh, thank Mitch Wilson, for, thank uh, you. Yeah, we can't, thank uh, you can't for cheers. the beer. Can yeah, go, look at this. Is it true you guys put a drop of your blood in each and every yeah, can? A drop of, of our blood is full in beard each can with, with the full Jamie Clump yes. and Kins. That's a, that's a secret that uh, Jonathan St. Pierre and Benji, uh, uh, they're, they're sworn to secrecy. Well, yeah, yeah, otherwise, sorry, I just, the uh, health and safety, it's a metaphorical, but it's like food coloring or something. But you you physically do the food coloring. We're, we're, we're physically uh, doing the food coloring. Well, when it comes to uh, St. Patty's beer, we, uh, we did the food coloring for those. <laughs> <laughs> but Cheers, Mitch. Cheers always, uh, always a pleasure. We need to bring Mitch back, and uh, you know we'll bring you back for more episodes, buddy. Yeah, I'd be happy. Lots of fun. We'll just bring you on as a guest when Clomp comes back. I'd be happy to be here. Happy to hang out. Love to love to see the studio and, and come on in. Great to meet. Uh, yeah, Pierre Pierre Jolly. Again, cheers, everybody. Cheers, cheers. And buy the book, and we'll see you tomorrow night, seven o'clock. Again, we're going to be talking about packing the igloo uh, next Friday night, uh, March tenth. It's uh, going to be the Cochrane Crunch taking on our Timmins Rock, and uh, the Iroquois Fall mayor wants to uh, pack the igloo. So we're going to let uh, the mayor speak, and we'll, uh, we'll see if we can pack that igloo. I, I think we can pack it. I think so. Between Timmins and Cochrane, it's uh, definitely well, – we always say pack the Mac. We're going to pack the igloo. And, again, thanks, Ronnie. We'll see you tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. You know Les got them hits, right? I'm not sure when I pulled. I'm not an issue, bro. It's really dreadful. Bet on myself and I proved it. I know the industry ruthless. I'm really a threat for nooses. The Chevy is dropping, it's ruthless. Think I'm the one and I proved it. I know the industry foolish. Think we're seeing the move. It really ain't dropping, I'm cool. Look at me struggle, I'm right on the bubble. I'm making it pop for being a fly. I'm in the huddle, created a hustle. When I'm at the bottom, you see me a lot. I know the energy scheming a lot. Then it's flat and I'm seeing the plot. It feel like summer again when I drop. Call up the label, say, give me a lot. My life is moving like Steven Seagal. Regular scheme that I leave it to y'all. I got to hide when we in the mall. The bigger you are, the harder you fall. And signing no paper, if I ain't the one that created it, bigger the volume you mean. I be the type to figure it out and figure a route to eat with the team. Bet on myself and I proved it. I know the industry ruthless. I'm really a threat for nooses. The Chevy is dropping, it's ruthless. Think I'm the one and I proved it. I know the industry foolish. Think we're seeing the move. It really ain't dropping like cold. Look at my hustle, I'm right on the bubble. I'm making it big and staying at home. Pay me an equity, please. The money you offer don't never do shit when it's gone. I just stay in Sylvester Salon. Walk in the booth like honey, I'm home. I never duck, they think I'm a clone. Just shot the video, crash the drone. My life a movie like Jaden and Will. And this shit directed by Jordan Peele. I said I'm the boy, the boy for real. The boy gon' run this scheme to a mill. Big ain't signing no paper if I ain't the one that created it. Boy for real. I be the type to figure it out. Figure a route to eat with my team. Bet on myself and I proved it. I know the industry ruthless. I'm really a threat for nooses. The Chevy is dropping, it's ruthless. Think I'm the one and I proved it. I know the industry foolish. Think we're seeing the move. It really ain't dropping, I'm cooling.